It was the big news story on one of the biggest travel holidays of the year. Our state was now one of 36 that is not in compliance with the federal ID program called the Real ID Act. That means in the near future, potentially, you may not be able to fly out of state without showing your passport. Sophie, you know, this broke just before the Thanksgiving weekend is what I'm referencing. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's amazing how quickly it got out there. People just exploded with oh, the idea seriously. of this, right? Seriously. Now, let me take a moment and just say that I just got a new passport. Oh, not right. because of this, but for, and uh, it is the worst photo ever Thank taken you. of anyone ever. And I just can't, <laughs> I think it's going to be demoralizing for the state, frankly, when folks start showing up at the post office and having to have those pictures right? taken. Um, it, it is baffling to me that we don't have clarity on this issue. Mm. And, it, and it sounds like what's happening is that the state is playing chicken with the federal government. You know, mm -hmm. the, the basically, we don't believe that you're going to shut down the airline industry sure. on this issue. Sure. It'll be interesting to see what happens. I want, I want to go to Arthur on that very point, because the journal opined about that very thing. Uh, Sophie mentioned that, and I thought they yeah. had a very interesting angle on this. Now, there's 36 states that could be in this game of chicken. Mm -hmm. And I, I, I don't know if they may not win this, to tell the honest truth. There's something interesting oh, going on Oh, absolutely. I think the 36 states will win it. After mm -hmm. all, Idaho never... Uh, famous as a dangerous left-wing uh, community, <laughs> Idaho has told the federal government to go take a hike. So right. I think the 36 states win. I think uh, that uh, the deadline is postponed again. Mm -hmm. It's been uh, postponed before, and properly so, since the Real ID legislation uh, uh, unites those people uh, on the libertarian right mm -hmm. and me on the left in uh, disdain. Mm -hmm. uh, it's uh, too invasive. Sure. Uh, and so uh, we ought to postpone it and then we ought to write new legislation, which makes more sense. There you go. But Jim, um, we've got any, any given day we wake up, not to be an alarmist, but we're all in reality here of a new world. Domestic terrorism is an issue. Mm -hmm. It is an issue. And if we're going to be on the side of the saying that in our state, we, we feel we have the right to give immigrants you know, identification without doing a whole lot of background check to go with it. We've got a big clash here. Something's got to give. And, and do, we, do we give up something if the states, in fact, win this fight? Congress has, within its constitutional authority under the Commerce Clause, the power to require a uniform form of identification for travel between mm -hmm. the states. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't make sense to have 50 different standards for identification when you get on an airplane. There really has to be some, some uniformity. Big, it's just crazy. A uh, president told us just Tuesday night mm -hmm. that this year uh, the government has intercepted terrorists trained in Afghanistan who had come here. I, right. They've kept it quiet. We that's haven't right. heard much about it. And that's good. I'd rather sure. not hear about it. But when our president says that, he, you sit up and pay attention. That is, it is still an issue. Um, who's going to win? I, you know, there's going to have to be some uniformity. This is sort of like the converter box debate, you know, with the digital TV, where you keep pushing it back. I mean, the law is clear what's required. The deadlines are clear, you know, and some people just aren't going to do it. I think there's going to have to be, there will be an extension because the chaos that will be caused would be enormous. Uh, but there's got to be some uniformity in what's required to get on an airplane yeah. to fly around this country. It is sort of yeah. astonishing <clears throat> that, I mean, I have the new driver's license. It is astonishing that I could get a new driver's license this year with all these holograms and see-through stuff and the whole thing. And it's not in compliance. Right. That's right. Well, what a but, waste. But yeah. Remember, I don't think it's the ID that's not in compliance. It's the regulations behind mm -hmm. who we're giving those yeah, IDs. Who gets them. Yeah, who so right. You can get a top-notch ID that doesn't really mean much. Exactly. Sure. <laughs> so, mm -hmm. so if it's about execution because of, say, your ID doesn't fit the part mm -hmm. versus the regulation behind it and what you're allowing, those are two different things. Sure. I'm all for uniformity. I think there should be consistency. It would make it very easy on a lot more industries than Bar just the airline. Alone. Bartenders, <laughs> right, the bars, oh, New Mexico, they wouldn't have to have their little book, right? To say, who's legal, who's sure, not? Sure. But it's about what's behind it. And yeah. I think each of the different states has a different reason of, as to why. Ours specifically is around, I believe, illegal immigrants getting it and one other thing I'm not sure of. Mm -hmm. But I think if we, if we I, I agree, I, I think the states will win in the short term. Long mm -hmm. term, we've got to get to a place where we feel comfortable that one ID can work. You know, execution, I, I like your use of the word there because you talk to any congressional office, any congressional staffer, the problems they handle on a weekly basis about folks trying to get passports mm -hmm. is a nightmare, right. Arthur, a total nightmare. This is not just walking down the street and filling out some paperwork mm -hmm. and 
It's, it's a process that can take a long time. It's I ridiculous. got mine last one a couple of years ago. It's still valid, I think. And f well, given some of these problems, I may have to use it and get out of town. <laughs> um, but uh, yet yeah, there is <clears throat> other ID legislation mm -hmm. around, and it purports to solve some of the problems with the real ID legislation. That was passed uh, perhaps too fast. Ah. Interesting. Is uh, our next governor, whoever that might be, Jim, going to give on immigration to be in compliance, so to speak? I mean, that's the other option that we just changed. And, and here in the city with the new Mayor Barry. Well, it depends who it is. Yeah, um, yeah. You know, I have a feeling that if Alan Way wins, uh, it, we, there won't be any bending. Um, if Diane or, one, bending which or any of the other Republicans. Sure. Um, I don't think there'll be any bending on it, but uh, Diane Dennish, I mean, she was part of. I think she stood behind uh, giving, you know, driver's licenses to and so immigrants did regardless. And a lot of police and law enforcement stand behind it because it has practical There's some advantages. Sure. There's some merit to it. So let us not oversimplify. Mm -hmm. There are 36 states that are in this right. situation. Some don't want to pay. Some say it's an unfunded federal mandate because right. it imposes greater costs than they didn't want to do it. Our state is one of the few that has taken this position because of the immigration issue. Right. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. Well, Sophie, it seems to me, it, we're, getting, we're honing in on something here, because the immigration thing is, is where this thing is going to live or die, it seems to me. And all it's going to take is a couple more either horrific headlines or something, and, and tides can turn here. I, I, you know what I'm saying? I guess it's hard to predict. I, d I do, and it is hard to predict. I think that in this state um, and in other border states, we recognize that this is immigration is a very complex issue for us, mm -hmm. um, and to, uh, to sort of wipe out the debate with this one sort of flash of an ID card mm -hmm. seems to me it seems to me unlikely that this is it. That mm -hmm. This is going to be the thing. Here's my prediction. Um, with our new mayor and our new um, head of all things law enforcement, I think there will be a, a something that might radiate out. There might be a change coming in Albuquerque on this the idea of immigration status and identification that could radiate over time statewide. I'm not saying that as an advocate of it. I'm just saying everything starts with the first domino falling over. Because yeah, they're going to abandon the sanctuary city. Exactly. Because that was exactly. Barry's campaign. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. And so Katie and barred the door after that. that will cause lots of trouble in the business community because those immigrants work jobs. That's right. That's right. Now, the clock is officially running over here. It's time for our rapid fire close to the line as we tackle several topics in just a matter of minutes. Up first this week, President Obama laid out his new strategy for handling Afghanistan. Jim, not everyone in our congressional delegation was very pleased, namely Mr. Lujan and Mr. Uh, Udall. Udall, thank you very much. Did he? Did the president make his case? Did he make a case locally for New Mexicans? He, he can't make the case in one speech. Um, he has said this um, escalation. Uh, is of vital national importance. He needs to keep saying that over and explain it over and over again because mm -hmm. there are men and women going to Afghanistan to lay their li lives on the line for this nation. He needs to back them sure. up and get the nation behind them. Lonnie, what a lovely bit of stagecraft at West Point, though. That I mean, uh, I, if you can't get filled up watching those kids, mm -hmm. you can't get filled up. I'm sorry. You, That's, you give the president credit. Yeah. He knows how to put on a show, and he knows yeah. how to do it well. And, and the men and women at West Point, uh, standing behind him was an amazing backdrop and a great place to do it. Mm -hmm. I hope we're not lost in the fact of, of what Jim said, and that is, you know, why are we there? Why are we doing it? Mm -hmm. And regardless of your position, we always have to stand behind our troops. And if the right people are telling you they need help, you need to get behind them. That's right. Arthur, he ha has a problem, however, on the left with this. He has a problem on the left and on the right, and uh, <laughs> the, both parties are split Ten seconds. Uh, on this. Mm -hmm. uh, credit him, however with no Wilsonian rhetoric about imposing democracy, uh, no football coach rhetoric about just win. <laughs> he actually thought about it and never consulted, as far as we know, his gut. There you go. Hats off. Well done. President. That was worth the extra time. I like that. <laughs> Rio Rancho will be a test site for a new election procedure. Uh, a couple of them, actually. Among others, voters will be allowed to vote at the polling place of their choice. What? Uh, this is an amazing... It's huge. Right? I'm going to acknowledge this. <laughs> On some level, I think it acknowledges uh, that our lives are more complex than they were. Thank you. If you're working late, 
-hmm. you got to go to the place that's nearest to where you work. I mm -hmm. mean, this is this is the reality. If we want an uh, or lunchtime exactly near where you work, sure. exactly wherever works best for you. Sure. And um, insi I have to believe that insisting people go closest to their homes uh, mm -hmm. suppresses voter turnout. Absolutely. Easier to do with five sites, though, <laughs> than with hundreds yeah. of sure. sites. Good point. Uh, we're well beyond the age of voters' names on index cards and sheets of paper. We can make this happen and increase ver voter turnout. Sure. People can't remember where they're supposed to vote. So if you allow them to do it, they can do it anywhere they show up to. I'm all for that. That is yes. the best point of the round. I love that. All right, education leaders will take up a new plan this week, one that would require high school students to get good grades, good being uh, yet to be figured out before they can get their driver's licenses. So, Sophie, I'm going to start with you on this. Uh, SWAP particularly is, is not crazy about this. They, they feel it's, it's harmful to low-income Folks, but then other people, I've talked to some of my kids' friends, they're 16 and 14, they are so ready to get a driver's license, they would literally do anything, including it's, getting a decent it's grade. <laughs> including getting, if they have to. If they, right, <laughs> exactly. You know, it's a real, I understand Swap's, Swap's point, and I, and I uh, at the same time, I feel like, especially for younger kids, and, and when we saw when we saw that whole kid, the car surfing thing, especially mm -hmm. for younger kids, I think there's a responsibility, and they can demonstrate responsibility through whatever mechanism. Mm -hmm. I'd feel more comfortable with those younger drivers. Sure, to swap at a point, so, however. Tie it to attendance, ah. not grades. Well done. Uh, well done. Responsibility mm -hmm. is awesome. attendance. Because they are connected. They are connected. I, I think uh -huh. swaps off base. They say this, the, you know, tying this uh, to the license will impact lower income kids the most. You know what impacts them the most is a poor education and not being obsessed with learning. I say give it a try and let's see how it works. There you go, Lonnie, what do you think? A lot of parents already do it today. They tell mm -hmm. you you gotta get good grades to get your license, you gotta get good grades right. to get this. Mm -hmm. So it's already being used, I think it's just a further extension. And we're out of time on this, but I'm just curious, who decides what's a good grade? I, I really wanna see this one on the table. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> oh dear. Now, New Mexico's long-standing battle against drunk driving takes a new turn. As it turns out, a man was charged with DUI, you probably saw it in the journal. Even though he wasn't driving, he reportedly realized he was inebriated, Arthur, and decided to sleep it off in his truck. However, it did not meet the, the letter of the law, quote unquote, and some folks want to change that letter of the law. Well, I'm not sure about that. Dickens, you will remember, not me, said the law is an ass. I think it is up to judges, lawyers, uh, to make it a bit less of an ass. Yeah. Yeah, but, um, uh, but the law uh, makes kind of makes, you know, sure. sense in it. And, and Jim, the other side of this is he made a bad decision to overdrink, but then made a sort of okay decision to kind of sleep into this truck. Does Pass. the first one override the second one? I mean, so somebody gets behind the wheel and passes out. You know, I mean, and that's their defense. Yeah. Um, I, I think you need to enforce the law strictly. And if you are in control of the vehicle, sitting behind the wheel with the keys in your pocket or in the ignition, um, that's what the letter of the law says. You know what? Don't get in the car. Yeah. Period. Yeah. It's simple. Don't do it. Sure. Lonnie? I commend him for at least sleeping in his truck and not putting the keys in and driving because too many people mm -hmm. who are in that position do drive. Forget the law. Not sure. All I'm saying is I commend him for sleeping at all. Sure. Please. Well, you know, it's interesting. This is another, we've talked about it at this mm -hmm. table. You know, Arthur, you're a back east guy, you too, and you know, you too. You know, if you can't walk to the bar and walk home, you're asking for big trouble from mm -hmm. some people in the society. You know, you got neighborhood bars solve a lot of this, but you know, you can't well, legislate that. that. Yeah, right, we exactly. <laughs> drink at home. The drink at home, <laughs> right, thank you. This one's for Sophie. The Santa Fe Film Festival kicks off right now. Actually, it's been on for a day. Attracting the likes of Tommy Lee Jones, Ellen Curris, one of my cinematography uh, heroes, Mark Rydell, great director, mm -hmm. uh, all kinds of great stuff. You and I have long history with this festival. Oh, we've run into each other at that long festival time. many times. Ten yeah. years, ten years. It's incredible. Yeah. It's incredible. I have to say, if you live in New Mexico, reasonable distance from Santa Fe, have not been drinking before you get in your car, <laughs> mm -hmm. going back to our earlier topic, this is a festival worth checking out. Mm -hmm. The people you see in the, in the screenings who are so fired up about film, people you see at the parties, the young filmmakers who come from all over the country to show their stuff. It's mm -hmm. really fantastic stuff. There's got to be a celebratory thing for us in this, country, in this culture. Oh, it, it is just, wonderful. Yeah. And I would note that there are two other festivals going on at the same time, That's right. one of which is sort of movies for the Twitter generation, 30-second films, mm -hmm. which makes me think 
that it's time for the pendulum to swing back from images to words, from feeling to thought, and from quick to slow. <laughs> That is why you're here. I love this man. Well, one of the benefits about being on this show is I get to learn about things I don't know about. And I, I live in the state. I don't know you much about go. the Santa Fe Film go. Festival. I'm going to check it out. You know what's interesting about it, Lonnie, is, and a little ding of the bell there, but it's so accessible. So many huge stars. You could stand around and just talk. The Coen brothers I remember talking. Wow. The, Stephen Frears. Uh, I mean, just numbers of people. It's a wonderful well, event. Well, our state has become a, a movie mecca. That's Lots right. of things are being filmed here all the time. Absolutely. And that it's in Santa Fe and in New Mexico and that you have the opportunity and the rail runner goes there from That's Albuquerque right. and right. farther jump on board. try to get there I'll be there the whole weekend I can't wait to see Dabney Coleman I'm just weird <laughs> that way <laughs> so send us your topic ideas for Working the round table to that's right <laughs> just shoot us an email at infocus at kme.org leave us a comment at our blog if that's your preference and while you're on the site be sure to check out our online library of videos our newest edition is a profile of the new curator of invertebrates at the Albuquerque Biopark. He's got a special friend to introduce you to, a friend he says often gets a bad rap.